Bodhi, you gotta help Dada put tools away. Yeah, one's metric, the one's imperial. I suppose we have become a bit more cautious with two precious souls aboard. Getting into a life raft is never a great scenario. Doing it with a two and a four year old seems like an impossibility. It will likely never happen in a calm sea, but instead in a raging, angry ocean. How do you even begin to transfer little people into a life raft? We've given this extensive thought and are honestly making some changes, most of it around tethering the children to ourselves. But back to the topic. Last fall, a catamaran we saw at the boat show by the name of Moon Dragon capsized off the Cape of Hatteras. Basket's coming up. Basket's below the aircraft. The cause? Port and starboard hatches failing. And this isn't the only case. If you start looking online, you find more escape hatch problems. Our leak came from the same hatch in the starboard hull. It was not able to see if the hatch was there or if the glass was missing because the seas were heavy and it was dark. I tried to fix the leaking with pillows from the saloon, but the hole was too big and the seas were too heavy. The water was coming in really fast. We've had two instances of escape hatches leaking aboard our boat. Always offshore, always in rough conditions. Port side bilge pump has been working overtime trying to keep up with this leak that's developed here. And we just actually replaced all the seals on it and it's still leaking bad. The internet is littered with these escape hatch failures. Here's another one. Helia 44 in VHF range radioed that an escape hatch had abruptly failed and that they were taken on water. Apparently the sealant around the hatch had completely failed and that the only thing holding the plexiglass in were the handles. The problem with these escape hatches is that the lens, the glass lens can just fall out. The amount of pressure and slamming in the tunnel between the hulls of a catamaran are significant. This safety feature, as mandated by various governments, is a real and significant risk to blue water sailors. That's why we're bringing attention to it. Not because we don't like Goyot, not because we don't like Lagoon, but because the implementation of the escape hatch is wrong. So Catamaran MP, if you don't follow them, they're a great, great resource. He has a, I believe a Lagoon 440, and he's done so many cool things with it. Before he even left on a circumnavigation, they just finished in Cape Town, but before he left Cape Town many years ago, before all of this bulkhead issues on the Lagoons came out, he glossed in every single bulkhead and he reinforced his main bulkhead. So he's a really cool guy. And he has now, as of like a couple of days ago, before he departs, I guess, the second circumnavigation, uh, hired someone to manufacture a ring that will go on the outside of his escape hatch just to hold them in. And that's what we're here to do. We're gonna do that in the water and just get that ring bonded to the hull and to the glass so that they can't fall out. Starry Horizons, they're a great resource as well. They've just finished a circumnavigation, I think a year or two ago. And they wrote a whole article on it. So the glass was falling out. I think it was Goyato Lagoon came up with a solution, which was put in some bolts and retaining washers on the outside, the exterior of the glass to hold the glass in. So our, ours has that. Ours have that, but I don't feel like it's enough. So we're going to create actual gasket ring I don't know what you call it like a toilet seat that will sit over the whole hatch on the exterior all right big day today Helen she uh, works here in the uh, British Virgin Islands has created these collars these are made out of epoxy and glass and they're gonna fit right over top of the outside of our escape hatches these are our escape hatches and they're non opening so you have a salmon right here and you would use this to smash the escape hatch if you need to get out. 
That could be because of fire or if the boat's flipped and everything's been filled with water. So you wanna even be able to see the collar because it'll sit right over top of the frame and a little bit of the glass to hold the glass in because the glass can fall out on the outside. Hopefully this boat will be more secure than when we first installed these hatches. How much 5200 do you think you've applied in your entire life? Not so much because I'm a bit anti it, except for applications like this. So if you look at these escape hatches, they're actually super close to the water line. I mean, they're maybe six inches off the water. Um, that's part of the problem because when you are at sea and there's obviously always swell and waves out there, um, they're always submerged and worse than that, they're getting pounded. This whole bridge deck actually um, gets pounded so hard that it will move probably about an inch at times if we get a really bad uh, side ocean swell where it comes up underneath the hull, goes boom, and then back out the other side. So we used to have uh, hinged escape hatches where the hinges were at the top and then it could hinge out and open. And that is probably in the long run a safer option because the glass can't actually fall out whereas these ones are fixed and um, the glass can fall out if, it, if, the, if the bond between the glass and the aluminum frame fails. Whereas the hinged ones, obviously the hinge will always hold it in and you might be able to secure that window closed even if it does leak a bit. Escape hatches are one of those things where I just feel like it should be probably underneath the pitch deck right here, outside of the water, or this whole tunnel should be higher um, so that then you can mount the escape hatches uh, much higher or not have escape hatches. Um, that's an argument to be had because you know this is a certification issue and what is the likelihood of a catamaran of this sort flipping? Pretty unlikely. Um, I think uh, this catamaran probably would take a lot to flip this catamaran. It is a heavy catamaran, it's a cruising catamaran, not a performance catamaran. So those are all arguments that you could have, but here we are stuck with our escape hatches and in order probably to be covered by insurance, we need to maintain those escape hatches. So that's what we're doing here and making sure they're waterproof and watertight, yet also still um, escape hatchable, uh, allow us to be able to escape. So we have, you, this is not an everyday job. <laughs> uh, we are, I think we, we got a bit lucky to have Helen here and uh, working underneath our boat, not hauled. Like we should have done a hang and hold to do this. Uh, it would have been a lot easier for everyone involved. Fifty two that thing back onto the paddleboard. So this is the final product. We have uh, the ski patch we can which can be smashed as before. We have the four bolts that are safety bolts with a big head on them that retain the glass if it were to pop out of the aluminum frame. And we have this new collar. This collar um, holds the glass inside and stops the glass from falling out if it were to disconnect, if the bond would disconnect from the aluminum frame. And everything has been put together with 5200. So there's 5200 um, behind this frame on all sides. Oh, it's still there, see? And it is just drying right now. So. Pretty stoked about that. Um, these escape hatches are never going to fall out again, ever, ever, ever. Um, not that they did before, but it was one of those things where you just never knew. Of course, Brent from Catamaran MP being the superior seaman has gone above and beyond and created an additional interior safety barrier. I'll let him explain. Got a few people asking about these frames. So what we did here was we, we have a frame that comes basically um, inside the boat all the way through from the outside so basically the frame on the outside is linked to a frame that comes all the way through 
We've put plexiglass on top of this with a frame that basically goes into the glass. Now, the idea is to put um, kind of like hand wheels on here so that we can basically lift this and the plexiglass off. And then if you take a look on the other side, we've built a frame on the outside. And this is the frame that we've sort of said to people, um, you know, that, that we feel keeps the glass into the boat, the original glass. And that basically gets bonded uh, in there and over the entire existing frame. Uh, that lagoon have um, which is obviously the Guayo hatch uh, that keeps failing and of course they've brought out these flimsy little brackets that you put on there I don't trust those at all um, so we've hence we've gone this route when you sail offshore you carry the responsibility for the lives aboard you scrutinize every piece of equipment ensuring nothing will fail in a catastrophic way this vigilance is not born out of doubt, but out of experience, knowing the wrath the ocean can bring upon you. There's no guarantee of a rescue, it's just you and the sea. And ultimately, that's why many of us are out here. We're the masters of our own ships and control our own destiny, embracing the challenge and freedom that comes with sailing around the world. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say this, the last six months of our life has been some of the hardest six months I think we've ever had. Um, I'd say since we've had the children um, in the last four years, it's been more challenging than we expected. Um, we've had a few more setbacks than we've expected. We've had a lot of opportunities. And also, um, yeah, more setbacks than we ever anticipated. Uh, we put on a brave face a lot for you guys. and. Sometimes it's really freaking hard. And uh, this decision to cross the Pacific is not one that we've actually taken very lightly. Um, first off, it was to put us closer to the boat build, and now it's just for our, our well, our set, our, our general uh, lack of the ability to sit still and our desire for more adventures. So we're going. Um, it, it wasn't an easy decision to go it's not an easy decision to stay um it's not all it's we, not a decision uh, we've taken lightly we spent a few hours this morning just planning and talking things over and so i'm talking like we're supposed to leave for panama today and we questioned the whole pacific crossing today. and we just almost canned it today um the whole thing and, and uh yeah it's it's tough I, I don't know how to explain it like i, I really want to go but at the same time, I, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I want to get Willa into immunotherapy at home in Canada. Yeah. So anyone that doesn't follow us regularly, Willa is super allergic to dairy, like anaphylaxis style of uh, allergy. And, um, there's one option and to coconut. and coconut, but there's an option to give her immunotherapy where she gets micro doses of, of dairy to build up her immune system um, response or decrease her immune system response. And in order to do that, we have to be um, in civilization for at least six months, which really doesn't jive well with, you know, creating content because you can't create content in a city for a sailboat channel. So, um, we're trying to slot that in and figure that out and we'll figure it out yeah yeah it's a lot to balance it's a lot to balance to be a parent it's a lot to balance to run a business and then to have your home and business all interlinked and moving across oceans and to try and build a production series boat is a lot so i'm not surprised we're struggling a little bit but you know you have to struggle sometimes to get ahead on the other side so yeah it's just how much do you struggle and how much harm can that create uh because it's like so much discomforts right you want like a little bit of discomfort so you so you grow but not too much so that you you crash and you burn crash. Yeah. so because <laughs> the human like human like nature or human whatever like us as people we can only take so much before yeah. you sort of like throw in the towel and give up um um and the boat build is it's it's a bit delayed. I mean, I ex 
Ben's been so optimistic about it progressing on on schedule on time on everything and uh, it's official guys it's it's delayed right now um, uh, we, we've um, no fault to well <laughs> we're not gonna lay blame um, but due to our changing things our drive to build a series production boat mm -hmm. um, that been... everyone can kind of easily kind of get into not easy ugh, easily is the wrong word but that that there's more opportunity for other people to get the boat that we feel is like the ultimate cruising boat um, without it just being a one-off build um, it's definitely created more complexities and delays due to trying to build multiple series that appeal to multiple people not just us so so that dream hasn't died but it's yeah anyway we don't want to talk about it but yeah we just have to give us a few more months <laughs> and we've got to figure a lot of stuff out about what we want to do uh, but it's been a huge investment in time in um, in sort of like heartstrings. I don't know how else to say that, but like it's like it's been a big freaking roller coaster, and yeah. um, we're kind of tired of it. And so that's why we were questioning our whole decision because there's been sort of a few setbacks lately, and we were questioning our whole decision to cross the Pacific, and we've just decided that we're going to go for us and not for the bill. Yeah. We're we're still creating the ultimate boat. It's still in the works. It's just when do we start? When do we go? And what do we do? And we're still thinking that it's right for us to cross the Pacific for yeah. us. Um, anyway, so we've had a really wicked last couple of weeks, um, and we've been hanging out with Amber and Brennan from every Saturday. Every day. Every, every day. day sa every Sorry, Brennan. <laughs> He's probably giving me the finger right now. Um, uh -huh. He never would. No, not that guy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, it's and, great. Uh, oh, and, and Cat and Will from Monday Never. Yeah, Cat and Will, they were our little inspiration before we set sail. Uh, we were still working desk jobs, nine to five desk jobs, and they were sailing the Caribbean. So they're back out here as well. Um, I don't think they're putting out videos, but they're lovely, lovely people and exactly how they are in videos. So yeah, it's cool we, to connect with them. Um, We've had a great four days and it's funny because we're flighty and so we haven't hung out as much and we, we probably just should have. And here we are. Here we are, set and sail to the Pacific. Well, thank you to the patrons who have signed up to join us on the Panama Canal. We've got way more than we ever expected because it's a heck of a journey down there for like two days to hang out, two or three days hanging out with Nahoa. But we're really, really, really excited and um, we're gonna make it a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we, we've enjoyed our time here and uh, it's time for us to go. But have a look at this. Empty beach, and then twice a day, these guys come in. They drink, they party, and then they leave. It's pretty cool. This is uh, normal life for us, and then there's people that come in for a few hours. Um, and enjoy this place too. You know, sometimes I've been thinking, I wonder if they're having more fun than we are. I kind of feel like they are.